Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, back with another repair video this time. So I was on eBay looking to see what they had, and I usually search under the title um, Game Console As Is or Game Console Broken, and I'll sort by newest and uh, see what pops up, because usually the best deals are the ones that are gone within like a couple minutes of posting. And I saw some guy had posted uh, one of these guys, and it's a Retro Duo Portable. Um, and using, you know, the bill and adapter, you can play SNES or NES games, which is really cool. Uh, and I've been wanting to at least try one of these out, uh, because I've seen them. Uh, my buddy has, like, an older version of this. I think it's made by a different company. Um, and it looked pretty neat. So I wanted one, but I wasn't going to pay full retail value. So I found this guy listed for 30 bucks, um, or making a, a best offer. And it was sold as broken. Um, and the seller said it charges, uh, the LED goes red, and then once it's done charging, it goes green. But when you turn it on, nothing happens, uh, which is exactly what's happening right now. Uh, so um, I made an offer for uh, 20 bucks, and he accepted. And this comes with the original box and you know the original accessories and the manual and everything. So I thought that was a pretty decent deal, and it would give me something to do. And at the very least, if I get this working, I could easily make my money back. Um, so I just wanted a quick project to do. So anyway, yeah, as you can see, turn it on, nothing happens. Um, so we're going to do a quick uh, debug session and maybe see if we can fix this in this video. If not, um, this might be a two-parter. But uh, one thing that I noted, first thing I did when I opened up, just to make sure it has a battery in, uh, and it does. And this has a very interesting odd design choice um, so we're just going to remove this battery um, if you can see here it says um, 18650 which is the size of the cell there are two cells stacked in series um, 1800 milliamp hours 7.4 volts but you all notice there's only two wires which means they're not actually balancing the cells so that's really not a smart thing to do unless if um there is a small protection board here. If this board does about balancing for you, that, that would be great. Uh, but it's usually not a safe thing to just charge series cells without any type of balancing circuit. So I really hope that circuit does the balancing for you. Um, but uh, we're just going to get into this guy. And hopefully these... It doesn't... It looks in really good physical condition, actually. Looks like it was barely used, and even the uh, the pins are in perfect condition. There's like no dust on here, so I'm wondering what exactly is wrong. I'm hoping it's just the uh, the if there's a regulator, like a five volt regulator, because I know the old uh, SNES carts run off five volts. Um, if that's blown, then that'll be a very easy fix. Okay, so. Just gonna move these shoulder buttons out of the way so they don't get lost. So this is the uh, volume slider at the bottom. Make sure we do not lose that. And it opens just like a book. And there's some ribbons going to the front, so I'm just gonna detach these. And there we go. Interesting construction. Um, Seems to be like a main board here. I wonder if that's that's probably the LCD board because the uh, video connector's in there. Soldering's uh, not so great. Um, but yeah, we'll come back to that later. Anyway, here's the main board, and there's flux out the wazoo. I will definitely clean that up. And if there is a problem, uh, let's see. It's going to be towards this side. Uh, this looks like this is the DC-DC regulator. And... Um, so yeah, I'm going to see about there any screws. Yeah, there's two screws. I'm going to pull that out, plug in the battery, and measure some voltages. Oh, that's interesting. They right angle mount the, um, the cart connector uh, to a subboard, and then that gets right angle mounted you know, using headers. Oh, that's an interesting way of going about it. But yeah, let's just uh, plug the battery in. And this this will work fine. It should work fine without the screen attached on the front, just measuring voltages. So yeah, about 7 volts, which should be enough. And this is switched off. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm probing around here, and um, so when this switch goes up, it turns on. So I'm going to ground my probe uh, just using the shell of the uh, player uh, connect the controller port adapter uh, port because that's ground. Turn it on and probe right at the positive side of this cap, and you can see it's getting five volts, uh, which means I have a feeling all of this circuitry is working. Um, so. The next point, uh, just make sure this is off now. Um, let's just make sure when the switch is off, it's actually off as well. So this cap should be discharged now. And it is. So that's that's roughly normal from what I can see. Uh, next up, I'm going to see about this screen. Um, perhaps it's browning out the processor so that when we plug in these connectors, it's uh, dragging the voltage back down to zero. Uh, that could be one option uh, that's happening. Or it could be uh, the screen, maybe one of these connectors isn't working quite right or something like that. Uh, so we're just going to plug this in, turn it on, and remeasure that voltage. Make sure that's still good. Still getting 5 volts. Okay, so we're not browning out. Uh, so that kind of points me in the direction. So there could be two things wrong. Uh, make sure this is off. Um, it could be the LCD front board power is not getting through or something's just broken on this. Um, or it could be there's no um, video output from this board and thus the LCD never turns on. The weird thing though is um, this power LED probably is directly in parallel with that 5 volt rail. So whenever that turns on, this should turn on as well. Um, but it's not, which makes me think that um, air is... Something's wrong with this front portion. So we're just going to set aside this guy and unscrew these. Now it looks like these screws are different sizes, so I'm going to have to keep them separated. Okay, so just going to pull these out. And there's one more screw here. And these speakers are still connected, unfortunately. And they are probably glued in. So that's going to be a bit of a pain. Oh, buttons are all falling out. Get my finger in here and carefully undo the ribbon for the LCD. So, wow. Okay, yeah. So we have a lot going on here. Like I thought, this subboard is, um, it handles the video for the LCD. Um, just going to go through, I guess, and visually inspect and measure across this cap uh, without the LCD connected, but this connected to the, uh, the board here. Got to be careful not to short anything. Okay. So turn this on and ground. I will grab here. Just measure, yeah, about 7 volts. Oh, sorry. So about 7 volts on the battery. Measure's okay. What about this cap? Ah! You see that? Some kind of intermittent connection, it looks like. So just me probing in that area, got it to turn on, and it's blinking, which I guess means low battery. Uh, so there's definitely something up with uh, some of these soldered connections, I would say. I'm going to take a bit of a closer look. I'm guessing it. I was probing this, so I wonder if one of these solder joints is cold, and it looks like... Yeah, there's nothing plugged in. It looks like this top solder joint, uh, these two are not soldered very well. So I'm going to guess there's a cold joint. And when I went to probe it, I flexed the board just slightly enough to connect it. And I heard the speakers pop, uh, turn on, and then I saw this LED uh, turn on as well. So I'm just going to hit uh, the all these joints, actually. They all look kind of crusty. I'll hit them all with the soldering iron, reflow them, see if that'll fix the problem.
Okay, so I just reflowed every single joint uh, between this video board and the interface board. And uh, these, it looks like these top three, I know the um, this second one and this third one definitely were cold joints. I could actually see the crack when I looked through a magnifying glass. So I'm guessing what end, uh, ends up happening is uh, all these boards are screwed in, uh, but when you go to press the D-pad, it flex that wire just enough and... Um, the solder that they use is probably lead free, which is more brittle. Um, so I added a little bit of leaded solder in there to give the joints some mechanical strength. So I'm, I'm betting that's what happened is when they uh, played it after a little while, it cracked uh, two of those joints and it no longer would power on because of that. So um, I'm just going to button this back up enough that I can retest now. And uh, hopefully everything works good now. So... I'll meet you back when I have it uh, buttoned up enough to actually insert a cart. Okay, so I couldn't wait to get everything buttoned up. And getting this connector in without taking the LCD out, the cable's so short, it's really difficult to get it seated correctly. Uh, but I have it all together and I have it uh, with a cart inserted, so we're going to turn it on. Screen backlight comes on. Speakers work. Video works. There you go. So I'm going to button this all up. I haven't fully charged the battery so it's blinking low battery uh, but I'm gonna get this all back together and then we'll do a final playthrough with the uh, and I'll test it out with some other game cards okay and we're all fully back together screw back together um, be careful when you put it back together make sure the membranes aligned because mine wasn't quite aligned and my a button would wouldn't really press or it was difficult to press so I had to open it back up again, realign the membrane, screw everything down. Also the shoulder buttons, make sure they're aligned with the little rubber pads underneath them. Other than that, let me just show you some gameplay of um, one of the crowns of my collections. I love Chrono Trigger. Anyway, turn this back on and fire this away. And you can hear speakers work. Turn that down for a sec. And, um, yeah, D-pad, buttons seem to work just fine. Yep. Run. Yep, there we go. But yeah, it all works. The colors look actually quite a bit better in real life than um, on this camera. Um, and actually, you can adjust the brightness, too, so... And you can turn off the screen if you're using the video output port. Uh, but yeah, it all works. Um, okay, sorry, I just wanted to, to finish that battle. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it all works perfectly. Uh, viewing angle is not too great. This is just one of those like car backup um, LCD monitors that they sell. It's three and a half inches. Uh, so it's composite video, not great quality. But honestly, for how big the size of this screen is, it's it's not bad. Um, battery's almost dead, gonna have to charge it. Anyway, I'm gonna definitely put some gameplay into it. Um, it is pretty chunky, I'm not gonna lie, in terms of the hand grips. Um, this wasn't really meant to be a review, this was just a repair video, but it ended up being, um, this way. Anyway, uh, in, in another video, what I'll end up doing is, um, opening this guy up, because this actually should have an NOAC, a Nintendo on a chip. That should be pretty interesting. All in all, I'm pretty happy this ended up being pretty good it's it's the quality is a bit cheaper than i thought it would be uh but given that i only paid 20 bucks for this good enough for me um so yeah always wanted to either make or have a uh, portable snes and i have an old project video that i started and i accidentally fried the board um so i kind of put that on hold indefinitely and just never really got around to it but anyway at least now in the meanwhile until i finish that up i could uh play my games portably uh, yeah, so all in all, if you see uh, listings on Ebays for electronics that um, either inter intermittently work or they don't turn on, um, it's not always the case. It's a case by case. You have to read forum posts and other people's problems to see um, if anyone's fixed it before or if they have similar issues. Uh, but just as soon as I saw this listing, the guy said it charges. I had a feeling that um, the backboard worked perfectly fine it was something with the connections to the front board um and that ex that's exactly what it ended up being so anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh rambly long random video 
And if you have the same problem, hopefully you'll be able to fix yours as well. Or get a good deal on a broken one off eBay and fix it. And anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.